Well, greetings, and once again, I thank you for giving me the opportunity to share a little bit of time with you. And I'm joined by Deacon Chris Delerno, one of the deacons whom I will have the privilege to ordain in just a couple of weeks at St. Louis Cathedral. And Chris and I are standing here at Notre Dame Seminary, and so we have the opportunity this evening to welcome you uh, to Notre Dame Seminary. Tonight is the graduation of the seminary, the Graduate School of Theology. There are several lay people who are graduating and uh, a large number of deacons who are graduating who will be going on for ordination in just a couple of weeks. And two of those are from the Archdiocese of New Orleans. I thought that Chris and I would take this opportunity to remind all of us that we have an opportunity and also a responsibility to pray for vocations to the priesthood and to religious life as sisters and as brothers. You know, sometimes we hear people say, we don't have enough priests, we don't have enough sisters, we don't have enough religious brothers, we don't have enough people to do our work. It's not a God problem. <laughs> God has promised uh, through the words of Jesus that he would never ever leave the flock untended. He has promised that. And so God is calling people. I think we can be very, very certain of that. We, as God's people, have to be able to pray for those who are being called, that they will first of all hear the call and then have the courage to say yes. And as some of you have heard me say before in the Archdiocese, I truly believe that in every, every parish there is at least one young man or young woman who is being called to the priesthood or to religious life as a sister or brother. It's up to us to pray for them and also to pray for their parents. Nowadays it's not uncommon that parents discourage their sons or daughters from joining religious life joining the priesthood and so we need to pray for parents that their hearts will be open and truly able to say yes and to say that with a sense of pride and freedom. I'm very glad that you're with me Chris. I look forward Thank to you ordaining you in just a couple of weeks. Just a couple. And um, would you like to share anything on vocations as you, you've had a, a long journey. Um, you're a young seminarian or a middle-aged oh, se <laughs> a, a middle seminarian. Uh, but what, what advice would you give as we talk about as you graduate tonight and as you move on to ordination to the priesthood? I, I think the very first thing that I find to be extremely helpful is to know that God is calling you, as you say. God is calling you from the, the, the moment that you're aware that there's a world around you. Um, and the bottom line is we will best be becoming who we are when we see that, when we're open, when we say, well, Lord, what is it you have in store for me? Uh, and I honestly believe in whatever way he wants to use us and whatever way he wants us to serve, the process starts a long time before when we're baptized. So um, anyway, so just being open, I guess. Just being open and being aware that there is. I mean, maybe the Lord is calling you to be a priest. Maybe he's calling you to be a sister. Maybe not. But if you are following in what he wants you to do, uh, whether you're married, whether you're single as, a, as your vocation, um, to me it seems like you'll be most happy there. And I know that's how God calls us to be. Thank you, Chris. So, sure. And, and I think we can conclude with the words of uh, blessed John Paul II uh, when he talked about vocations in general, specifically about priesthood. He talked about vocations in general when he said uh, that God has given us, has given to the church not just any kind of shepherds, but shepherds formed in the heart of Jesus. And so let us pray for our priests and religious sisters and brothers. Let us also pray for those whom right now God is calling, that as Chris said, they will have the openness of heart to be able to say yes. Please pray for vocations. I thank all of our priests, religious sisters and brothers. I also thank our seminarians and young novices, men and women, who have given themselves to discernment to say, Lord, is it I? God's peace, continued happy Easter. <laughs>